have my my going out time on this Friday coming up. That's kind of the plan. And I think there's quite a few events, isn't it, happening this first this Friday, this Good Friday or this Thursday? Because I'm sure I'm sure most people do the same thing that I've heard a lot of people do nowadays. That I've been more cognitive, I and mean, I think it's when you get older, right? You start to become a little bit less uh, reckless. You start to become a little bit more conservative. You start to maybe plan your nights out weeks in advance, right? Like an old lady. But um, I remember hearing a lot of people say, you know, um, New Year's Eve, right? I used to be the kind of guy that was obsessed with going out on New Year's Eve. So now I can celebrate the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 bullshit, right? But a lot of people, what they would do instead is that they would go out. Like, imagine if New Year's Eve fell on a Tuesday and New Year's, I don't know, the actual New Year's Eve fell on a Tuesday or maybe or something or out on a Monday. They actually go out the weekend before that, right? Just so they could, you know, have like a, basically a free weekend and then basically another two days to just relax and chill. And some clubs as well, like, you know, it's a bit corny, but some clubs will do the, the will do the countdown shit, like, just to make up for the guys that aren't actually there on New Year's Eve, right, but there a few days before. And I used to think that's a bit weird, but now, looking back at it, being older, I think, you know what, it's actually a better thing to do, because what inevitably happens is that you inevitably go out again, you go out on the weekend, because you're feeling hype, and it's the end of, I don't know, maybe you broke up for work really late, but, you know, you go, you go, in a, you go out that weekend before New Year's Eve, then you go out again on the New Year's Eve day, and then by the time you get to work, you are literally hanging, like hanging beyond belief. It's just, even if you don't drink, it's just exhausting to be around so many people on New Year's Eve weekend all that time. So I think what I might do for these bank holidays is just instead of going out on that first, instead of going out on the Friday, go out on the Thursday after work and then just kind of stay in the weekend, of the weekend. And plus, because I've got essentially got two jobs, I'm working a nine to five and I'm working on the weekends doing DJ stuff. I kind of have to be a little bit more conscious of how I use my time. And not kind of just, you know, go around and fuck around all the time or whatever it may be. So that should be something good I'm looking forward to. Um, um, so, yeah, w- w- what's happening this weekend? Let me have a quick look and see, actually, through the event system on Resident Advisor. My favorite place to be, always on this fucking website. Let's see what they've got here. Um, so Thursday the 18th. There's probably going to be quite a few big events in it happening, right? Let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, yeah, see, already. There's one already I see here from Fabric. 20th anniversary. I think that's an anniversary that a few people... I think I heard somebody from this woman uh, complaining or throwing a bit of shade saying that, you know, again, a whole lineup full of white dudes or something like that. I forgot what it was, but, you know. <coughs> to be fair, like, I get what they're saying, but I, I don't ever go to Fabric for avant-garde, no, for well, avant-garde, but, like, you know, for forward-thinking music or artists. Like, you know what I mean? It's quite... It's basically the commercial end of, like, electronic music, and it's sort of like the less commercial end of, of Ministry and Sound. Even the Ministry and Sound, I think, are going to have Harvey, I think, this weekend, right? Um, which I'm interested about that collaboration. I'm sure it's something to do with somebody. Maybe is he getting offered loads of money? Is it because the person that owns um, Ministry is a very much steeped in the electronic music scene? Because Ministry has a very um, rich history that Harvey's trying to tap into, and he's not really he doesn't really care about what it is nowadays. I don't know. It's interesting booking that. But anyway, so on Thursday you've got Fabric 20th anniversary. John Digby, Don Digby playing live. You got Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du Soleil, sorry, um, with Detroit Swindle, Harry Wolfman. You've got Bad Bruises in London with Sodom and Gomorrah. Electro, oh, I love Electro Works. I think I mentioned it before, and Electro Works is such a cool venue. I think I've been there a couple times for a boiler room, I'm going to say, right? And it was fucking awesome. It's such a weird space. Like, I don't understand how, I, I, again, like, I quite like what they did here with the forward slashes. Instead of doing it, yeah, I like that. With location and the forward slashes, I quite like that. Uh, labels. Um, it's such a weird venue. Oh, look at that. Wow. This looks awesome. It's such a cool venue. Um, there's so many weird little hidden rooms everywhere in the Electro Works. Um, again, I'm, I'm surprised more people don't use that space, and I'm sure they do, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just not aware of it. But it's such a cool, interesting space, especially now that you know most of our club spaces or clubbing spaces are being um, decimated due to the Hackney licensing laws. Um, you might have to be a little bit more creative in the spaces that you use and shit. But I really like Electro Works. It's really one of my favorite venues in London. Um, it, it, outside of it being a club, just essentially how it is, like you know, there's weird stairs everywhere, little side doors and secret rooms and shit. It's fucking awesome. If someone could actually turn that into a proper club, that would be fucking banging. Um, then you've got Tribes with Fort Remu, even Bags and Nick Sanyano at the cause. I, need to, I still haven't been to the cause yet. I need to go. I think this might be a good opportunity. Again, 20 quid. God, oh, my cheap. No, oh, it's, a, it's a good, oh, to be honest, it's a good price, though. You get to pay 20 quid for a party that starts at 5 and ends at 5 at 5 a.m. 5 to 5. That's fucking nuts. Of course, there won't be that many people there at 5, but, you know, still, it's quite a good um, place to go. Who's small people? Hmm. Are those the brothers that have the bar in Berlin? I'm not too sure. Oh, no, it's Hamburg. Okay, small people never heard of them. So they're playing. That should be quite fun. 
uh, tribes. You've got um, Tokyo Fantasy, Fort Remu, Small People, to, um, Earthly Measures, Even Bags, Nick Soniano, Studio 54 Legend, Hannah Holland. Awesome. Really good lineup that. And then what else have you have here? You have Clash in Capital, UK's biggest DMV festival at Printworks. That's going to be fucking messy, right? It's going to be bloody shards of ketamine and pills all over the fucking dance floor. Um, Seth Troxler at Village Underground. You've got U.S. Garage Warehouse Rave. At a... Oh, really? That's good. that's a pretty good promotion, isn't it? Again, I'm not. I'm, I wish I was. I don't really wish I was a promoter because that's a really, a really a specific kind of job for a specific kind of person. But um, that's a really good idea, actually. A UK Garage Warehouse Party at the Busy Building. That's awesome. That's a really good idea. You know, and again, special guests. You don't need. To, you don't really need to have anyone that famous. Really, you can just have you know, just you and your friends, and maybe I don't know. I guess you know they might. Someone's gonna pull out one man there, isn't it? Right? One man's like the go-to uh, party dup here, isn't it? For anyone in the scene that doesn't want to, that wants to book somebody big but doesn't want to spend big bucks, isn't it? Because he's always up for playing. Like he plays the most random places ever. Like, that, that, that's how you know he loves music. He loves the DJ. He plays everywhere. Like someone, if someone's offering him money, he'll play. Like, he'll play everywhere, literally fucking kill it. Like, he's probably one of my favourite guys in London, Point hands down, 100%. Uh, what have you got here? Teal Stu at Sway, Seth Trucks at Village Underground. Oh, interesting. I think that's a live set there as well. DJ Harvey, of course, at Ministry of Sound. Lexus Taylor. Hot Chip is absolutely going for it with the DJ. Exploding Points and Alexander Nutt at Five Miles. That should be fucking awesome. So loads of really good parties happening on a Thursday, as I, as I assumed. I think a lot of people are going to start going on a Thursday. Let's have a quick look at the Friday. I think most people are going to go out on that Thursday to have a good time. On that Friday, you've got uh, Printworks. You've got Book of Shade there. You've got the Buzzy Building Party there happening. You've got Horse Meat Disco at Prince of Wales. That should be fucking awesome. Um, what else do you have here? You've got Laurent Garnier. Oh, that Oval Space. That should be awesome. But that Oval Space is so, so overpriced. Mamma mia. Charles Peterson, X or Y. Yeah. Loads of good stuff. Loads of good stuff. Loads of good stuff. Happy to see that. So, yeah, if you're, I guess if you are in London or in the UK and you want to have a good time, I would suggest trying to go out on that Thursday. I think that's what I'm going to do, just just to be a, a, an actual adult. Go out on a Thursday, have a good time that way, and then you can have a little bit of a free day, a proper free day weekend and relax and take your time. Because um, I'm sure there'll be loads of street food festivals and, and fairs and stuff that you can probably go to during the day that'll be quite advantageous. The things that you kind of wish you would go to, but you know, you end up being a bit of a loser and getting smashed and ending up recovering for the next two or three days. Not talking to myself. Just